Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to this uh, Thrifty Canucks Thrifty uh, Thursday video. Now I am, this is a new setup. I'm, I'm just going to putz with this for one second. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Uh, yes, I'm in the bedroom. <laughs> I'm standing beside the ironing board. And I've got my camera, my phone holder perched on a crate. So, yeah, this is the um, filming by a wing and a prayer. Okay, um, this is a fairly extensive haul. And there's a cross section of items, both, um, you know, linen type, linen fabric things, some office things, a few books. And so on. And the reason I kind of went maybe a little overboard is because it was a bag sale. So fill a bag for $10. Now, of course, as you've probably noticed, wherever you are in the country, that thrift store prices are getting higher. Bags are getting smaller. The price per bag is getting higher and so on. Now, I still feel that I did really well because... I haven't bothered removing any price tags, but obviously I paid far less than the marked price. Now, that may not be as exciting as you think if the, the things were overpriced to begin with. Anyway, enough said. This is um, a nice big tin. It's probably 10 inches or so across. And I'm just going to, uh, you know, it's got this um, cross-stitch floral design on I'm just going to open it up so I can put smaller items in it. So that is that. Now, of course, decorative tins and boxes and bins and all that kind of stuff are great. Um, unless you're the kind of person that needs to see what's in them, then not so great. Or you have to sort of deface them a bit with some lovely labels. I like this. Oh, and it's been in the store for a while. I like this. It's brass. It's kind of heavyweight. And it, um, I like things that can make papers. Well, I mean, it's not that tall, but it can elevate things, sort of ca have them cascading. So that if I put something on my uh, desk in the right order, it prevents uh, what I'm uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is it avoids the dreaded piles and the stacking. Somehow vertical things seem to work better for me. Now, when I was um, and I shouldn't probably be wasting time taking price tags off. When I picked this up, I thought, oh, that's cute. Then I'm not really a blue person decor wise, and I thought, oh, Pyrex, isn't that great? Oh, well, what a find. <laughs> And then, of course, when I got it home and had a better look, it is, in fact, that classic uh, glass maker, Ikea. <laughs> I mean, it's still cute, and it, obviously it will be put to good use to store some things. I have no idea what these were, are, and neither did the gal selling them. But, so I don't know if they're intended... Like, you'd need a ring. If these were to hold fabric curtain, like, sort of make that cafe curtain type look. Um, but I thought, they fit in my bag. Why not? I think they are supposed to be 10 in here. So we'll see what happens with those. I don't know if they're the sort of metal that would rust or not, but that might be something to consider. I just, $5 a set. I just picked these up because they're nice. Now, those holes are absolutely gigantic. Um, maybe not that practical in the, in the real world. Um, anyway, I picked these up because most of my dishes, I've moved to just plain old white dishes because, um, there's a simplicity and a cleanliness and a sort of a classic look to white dishes. This is just a regular paper punch. I didn't try it out, but I know that my other one was starting to look a little bit like maybe it didn't want to cooperate uh, an egg timer i have a grandson who likes this kind of stuff and i think that that would kind of fascinate him found some decorative or i mean some buckles 
Um, I haven't really used buckles yet, and I should because now I've got three more. Um, oh, I said I put stuff away over here. Okay, I picked this up because it's clear and because it has a cover. Like I'm trying to move, for my small little items, I'm trying to move to clear containers just so that I can see what I have. And sometimes it is nice to have a little bit of protection from dust and overflow and, and so on. So I thought that was pretty good. Um, I picked up this grungy little pan, and I do mean little. It's I've never seen one this size. 11 by 7. I just thought that, you know, it's grungy. Um, when I'm dyeing paper, it's just another another little uh, tool at my disposal to maybe put smaller items in like guest checks or small envelopes or whatever. So that was the reason for that. Um, okay. Make a bit more room here. This... Let me see if I can take this off without wrecking the bag. Or the box, I mean. This says that it's a rose-colored dye. And you can just tell by the packaging that this looks like it's really old. I mean, not really old, but certainly not new. Ampelina dye in tube. Oh, let's read the English side. We'll color one pound of wool, silk, cotton, linen, or mixed goods. Oh, and it cost 20 cents. And it was distributed in Montreal and Quebec. Oh, looks like it's still sealed. Well, that's cool. I hope I don't get it on this tablecloth. Let me just... See what I can see here. Holy, that's a lot of instructions. Boil to dye, dip to tint. So this side is English, the other side is French. So anyway, someday, who knows, maybe I'll have to actually use it. In the meantime, I just thought that was really cute packaging. Now that scrap of paper that I put there, I don't have to work on that to get it. How come things never go back in the packaging the way they came out? Um, so this was just a roll of paper. Uh, I don't know how long, but I don't think it's two feet, but maybe 18 inches. Yeah, roughly 18 inches. And again, even if I just use this to cover my desk surface or whatever or some gel printing on or whatever that will be good um <clears throat> and while we're doing rolls this is a roll of it says um jennifer adams fine gift wrap coated heavyweight paper and of course it's never been opened 40 square feet of this. Uh, 20 feet times 24 inches. So, and, and the pattern is teal. So I would say you can almost guess the age of it based on the fact that teal was the color. So I'm thinking the 80s. But it's lovely because it's floral and it's got the, the gold outline. So I thought that was a good thing. And then this is a sealed roll of uh, wallpaper from Sears. Uh, don't know that there's much to say. Scrubbable, pre-pasted, a metric bolt. So, I mean, clearly very vintagey looking. And kind of, oh, this is quite a dirty package here, but maybe let's just rip this off and see open this up and see what the paper looks like. Ugh. So maybe the first few rounds would be wasted. 
because of soiling. Why is it sticking there? Oh, I guess they sort of tack it down a bit. Too. Clearly a very, whoa, a very kitcheny print. I can see cutting this up and, and uh, putting it in a, oh, 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 see that mold? Okay, so obviously this has to be, I'll stop handling it. Um, the mold, obviously, or the water damaged part has to be cut off, obviously. So, oh, and I've released the smell, too. So, that needs some attention. Okay, let me do maybe these things next. Oh, and you know what? While I'm here, let me show you something unbelievable. This was not purchased in a bag sale. I don't know if this even it probably doesn't even get on frame. This book is 13, over 13 inches by almost 10, nine and three quarters. It's called National Service Data. I don't know. The spine is six inches. And I bought this in an online auction. Whoops, can I do that without hitting you? And it is absolute, it's, I guess, 19, 1953. Mint, mint, mint condition. Whoops. Maybe I could knock my glassware off and break, whoa, and break it off. I'm, I'm just angling this so I can flip a few pages. But look at that. So I couldn't at first glance figure out how to, I'm sure it must be bound with, mm, looks like it probably has a couple of posts because how else could you hold anything this big together? But just gorgeous. And even this, this it's like a little stripy craft paper that's between each tab. So someday when I catch up, oh, um, I'm going to get this tin off here. So someday when I catch up, just beware that <laughs> there's going to be something gorgeous happening with that. Okay, let's do this. Um, if you saw one of my 100-day videos lately, you saw that I turned these sorts of chipboard coasters uh, into uh, journal toppers. And those had bird designs on them. These are, um, I guess, thank yous from the Red Cross. So they're only printed on one side, but that's fine, because who cares? Person's not seeing the backside anyway. So there were three of those, and I took three of those. Okay, clipboard, just because Oh, I, um, I cover these with uh, scrapbooking paper or, or whatever, could be napkin or uh, wrapping paper, whatever, something that matches my decor. And I have a few of these hanging from a small nail on my studio wall. And that's, I find just a good place to clip things that I can't lose sight of. Um, and they're not even necessarily anything to do with, with the paper crafting and, and the Etsy and all that. Just like maybe health receipts that need to be submitted or something or waiting for a check or something like that. This is a steno book. It's not old, but these are good because, of course, the pages, I mean, the lines run like if you tore one out and, and folded it, um, you could probably get actually two pages. Oh, let me demonstrate. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, but so if I were putting, if I wanted a lined paper in a small journal, I'd fold it in half and then I would fold it like so, and you probably can't see much white on white, but 
obviously now the lines are going the right way, which isn't always the case. And two pages in a signature. So that is good for that. Um, oops. Okay, let's get rid of these hardcover books. Um, these books are not the greatest in the world. This one I like because I love the color and it is, um, you know, it's, it's a handful. I think it's, you know, early 1900s. And it's a book about Canada. Um, it's a little scary to think that all of Canadian uh, history or whatever could fit in a little book this size. But these uh, markings that they, somebody did in the cover and on the end papers are kind of cool. House of something something in Dublin. <laughs> this one is called a pastor's record book and it's pretty small as you can see. Almost five and a half by, whoops, three and a half. Just knocked a roll of ribbon down. This too has quite a bit of writing. Not altogether readable to, voice, to be honest. Some, yeah, some, uh, so it's for pastors, so I'm not sure which religion this would have been. 1948. Um, so it's got like a little funeral thing, Bible text for Easter and so on. It gets a little more interesting here when you come to the, to these forms. So church officers, members, pastoral calls. Uh, these things are all blank, so I don't know. The guy obviously didn't <laughs> do any of that. Then it says rec baptismal record. And funerals. Name, age, date, place of burial, and cause of death. Sermons preached. Uh, sermons preached. An index card, uh, yeah. New members received. No, I'm not. The, the, all of the rest of this seems to have to do with uh, land location, like a lot or land location. Maybe, yeah, Harry Ainley. Uh, so in Edmonton, lot numbers, block plan numbers. I don't know what was going on here. If the church was buying this, but definitely a lot of calculations. Public school board, pleasant view statistics. Has to do with school board. I don't know. Anyway, um, I thought it was interesting. This book is leather. Leather. Beautiful end papers, gilt edges, several ribbons, four, four ribbons, um, you know, black and red um, font. Oh, I guess it's just in this section. Prayers, some music. Uh, I can't remember if I found it year or not. 1954. So it's not, I mean, the leather is clearly pretty worn, but, uh, you know, it's crazy. But I was wondering if brown shoe polish would, you know, maybe bring back some luster there. Anyway, don't know about that. This one, I believe, is Ukrainian. It is, I think, a Catholic thing, if I'm not mistaken. I thought I saw that somewhere. I don't know if I saw. I did see that somewhere. Anyway, it's all Cyrillic. 
paper yellowed and, uh, you know, not the greatest paper. Cap okay, Ukrainian Greek Catholic Association. Um, so that was pretty well it for books. But I did find this leaflet that has cake decorating. Um, this is a Wilton book, so of course they sell a lot of cake decorating stuff. So I thought it was interesting. Oh, 1975. So it's got some illustrations, the different tips and icing bags and so on. And how to make different designs. My mom was good at that. Decorating birthday cakes, decorating um, wedding cakes, you know. Making fondant and all that stuff. So I, I thought that was kind of cool. These are just exercise books. They're the ones with the half plane and then the, you know, the little dotted line to help kids learn up or in lower case. So a couple of those. Not sure. So these are like sun faces. They're little stickers. So I don't know if that's something like a teacher would would have and, and give to a kid. These are moons. So, and then this says coated two sides glossy uh, photo paper. Now. Typically, I would avoid glossy photo paper, except I did throw this in my bag because I wanted, I do someday, my goodness, need to try out all those alcohol inks that I got during a, um, when I bought a box or, or a lot of things through an online auction. Now, this is labels. I've never heard of this brand. Um, so maybe let's see what this is. Sorry for any shaking, but you know, they don't make those ironing boards. <laughs> okay, so they're basically the two and what is that? Two and a half by one inch. So I also did do a video, <clears throat> excuse me, in the 100 day series about some of the uses for these types of office supplies you know you can stamp on them stencil them print on them you know you name it you can do it this I thought was really cute I don't know that I found a date but it, the original price was 10 cents so you can imagine so look at all this beautiful well these color photos of different types of okay it says crocheted tatted and hairpin lace You know, a hundred years ago, when we had our craft and um, flower shop, we had a, um, we were selling tatting sh shuttles, if you can imagine. And of course, I have one. Did I ever tap a single thing? Uh, three guesses and the first two don't count. Okay. Somebody obviously wrote on there, 1955, Simpson Sears catalog. So, you know, typical, a lot of black and white pages, color interspersed, like, oh, see, so that is about the era for bark cloth. I thought that might be a 50s thing. I have a few small pieces of it, and I absolutely love it. Um, the one that I have is, well, I have a couple. And I just love them. Look at those shoes, ladies. Hmm. How about a pair of pumps for $5.95? And you could have red leather for that price. So, of course, a lot of things to see and, and use there. Uh, just a couple packages of doilies, because, like, hey, you know, there could be a worldwide shortage of doilies, and I don't want to be caught um, without... Uh, just going to see if I can use my ruler to fetch. I mean, this is just dollar store crocheted. Very little on a roll, but 
it's nice. Um, oh, one other thing I should have shown you when I was doing stationery. This is a box from Staples of 0.7 millimeter um, replacement leads for mechanical pencils. And I use a mechanical pencil, so I'm now fixed for leads for a good long time. Uh, oh, and I guess while we're at it, I should also show you these rulers I picked up. Little plastic one that I will probably chew some pieces, some notches into. So I have a short tearing ruler. This is a wooden one, two tones. It's got the little uh, metal edge on it. I thought these were kind of cool in that they had been. I don't know what he is that laser cutting. This one says awesome, and this one says you've got this. So I do have a bit of a ruler collection going on. Okay, enough about that. So let me show you this. I think is it for ribbon on the spool. So. That's sheer with kind of a design down the middle. Uh, a lot on here. Uh, 100, only 100 yards. I am putting together some ribbon bundles in my store. Uh, this is yellow. Never been opened. Not quite the same design as the blue. There was a, another spool of the yellow, but I thought, well, let's ch ch uh, change it up a bit and... And then, okay, so this one, the pink and the yellow are this design. So, ribbon coming out the yin yang. Um, yeah, let's do these small things. So, this was just a small piece of grow grain with a green leafy motif on it. So, I took that. Now, this... I'm not sure, okay, that looks that looks to me like a phoenix. This is lovely, and this is, I don't know, maybe necessarily the terminology, but so it's, it's woven, but wouldn't some of these, even if a person didn't want to use the phoenix, aren't those others just lovely to work into a, um, a snippet roll or let this be the base for a snippet roll? And, um, you know, cover up the phoenix if it isn't desired. Because it's got the nice little edge on it, top and bottom. I don't know. Anyway, I thought that was very nice as well. Okay. This was in a bag. I can't, I don't know. But again, who cares what the original price was? It was, I got all this stuff in a bag, in, in three bags, so 30 bucks. Plus, um, the tin and a piece of jewelry was separate. So this is like double decker, <laughs> sort of that dusty blue lace. So I, well, I don't know how I feel about it. Sometimes I just spend it hours at night watching TV and removing the this binding thing and then you end up with flat lace but I guess occasionally a person doesn't mind having some gathered lace as well so you know can't get to everything all at the same time so we'll see how that works out this was just or this might have come in two bags even um you can't really see much against this. I don't know how much better that will be, but so this is, you know, there's nothing so great about any of these, but we do know that lace costs money. So uh, I'm, I try not to be a lace snob. If I see it, I'll buy it. That has a more scallopy design to it. That's just another kind of a narrow gathered one. Uh, okay, I've shown you that, that, 
And there's this. Oh, that's more. That's prob. Yeah, that's more of the same. Oh, but it's narrower. No, it's the same. And then this one. And we know this sort of ribbon was used a lot back in the day for crafting. And you could thread a satin ribbon through those holes. And it would be lovely. Um, this is a little bag of braid. And sort of a bluey, no, a green gold ivory color combo so actually that this well, i call it a flange i don't know if that's the right word or not is nice enough that you could almost use it as is i mean i've seen people using this sort of thing in in the uh, how bowl can you go thing and then you know just if you don't like the look of that cover it up with something else but ideally, or originally, these things were intended to be sandwiched between two layers of some two layers of fabric and then be sort of a piped edge around a cushion or whatever. So those colors are, you know, not bad. <clears throat> okay, bunch of doilies. And again, now I have I like, I inherited a bunch of doilies from my mother and from uh, my aunt when she was downsizing. And um, I, of course, have not done anything with those other than, you know, I'm just hanging on to them and appreciating the, the hours of uh, skill and um, effort that went into, you know what, let me put this piece of fabric down and then maybe these things will show up a bit. This is just a curtain panel. Uh, but I like the color, and of course, this is a good weight for like a journal cover or something. Sort of this jacquard type look. So anyway, what I was driving at is when I find thrifted doilies, I don't feel bad about cutting them up. Or, And now I have so many of them that I've gotten. And again, I won't pay a lot for them because I don't actually need any more. I don't think. Um, this was a set of three. Oh my God, she had them priced at $5 each. Yikes. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, this is kind of an interesting blue. I don't think I've ever seen that before. So this would be like a, a dress or set or something. Anyway, what I was saying is now with these sorts of things, I feel like if I want to, I feel like I should be putting a, a doily around every single journal because I have enough to do that. So these things will all uh, go through the wash. This one is one of those that sort of, you know, how <laughs> maybe your mother or you um, used to do doilies and then starch them so these little these little things all sat up like almost like a <laughs> fluted crust on a, a pie crust. Uh, I don't know about these prices. Here's another one. This is kind of different in that it's kind of elongated and it's an oval. That would look cool around a book. This one has uh, kind of a dusty pink on it both oh and you can see it's pretty dirty or stained so again that's another good reason to oh even worse on this side um well all of these things i said will be washed but it's also a good reason to um you know cut them up and use the bits and pieces or or grunge them further by dyeing them so i think with some careful planning a person could snip something snip that white thread there and free up the pink mm, this one has <clears throat> excuse me <coughs> sorry this is this shape i don't know if you can see the entire thing but 
if you can see this much, the other is a mirror image of it. And it's got these more dimensional flowers and a light, light, very light pink around the edge. So don't know if that was the original pink or if it just faded with time. This is a heavier, coarser one. And I don't know if everyone felt the same way, but I know that that uh, my ancestors certainly seemed to put more value in the finer ones. So this took more skill than this because the thread is so much finer and, and so on. But, of course, for our purposes, they're all pretty darn nice. This, I believe, was intended to be put on a cushion because I know I've, I've seen this kind of thing before. And again, there's some stitches letting go and so on, so don't feel bad about doing something with that. Okay, let's keep going here. So we just basically, just kind of scanning around myself here. Um, oh, looks like that was maybe woven into it. This is like, um, I, I'm not sure you can see the, there's kind of a design that has been woven into it and maybe that girl was part of it because you can't really see any starting and stopping of stitches. So not sure about that, but that little woman could be an interesting uh, bit of, um, you know, something to adorn something. This, if I'm not mistaken, well, not polka dotted one, but plain stuff like this used to be called stitch witchery. So it's basically kind of a, a stiffening mm, thing <laughs> for fabrics. Now, I'm not sure, to be honest, why, what was the point of making polka dots? Because if you were, if you were trying to use this with white fabric, those polka dots would probably show through. But anyway, they are interesting and of course we'll find a use for them um okay i will no i'll just keep going here this uh, i bought quite a few yeah this is a pillowcase but isn't that the cutest little <laughs> look at how cute and if a person chose to, um, you know, cut around them or cut around a few of them, wouldn't that be cute to add to slow stitching or whatever? What I should probably do is take the hem down <clears throat> before I wash it so that, um, anyway, I just thought that was really sweet. This I just grabbed mainly because of the color. Another pillowcase. Uh, this this design, you know, would be cool on a, you know, with the right color combination. Probably, you know, three inches wide. That could look good on a on a um, boho journal as well. I took two of these because uh, these colors are gorgeous. They're pillow shams, so you can see the reverse side is really nice as well. It feels, I'm sure the content is probably just polyester cotton or something. Uh, can't see a label on that one. But is that not a gorgeous? And it's got, you know, I'm a sucker for paisley. That's just an oversized paisley. <clears throat> uh, I'm surprised there isn't a care label sewn into this. Well, it doesn't matter. It feels lovely. It feels sort of like brushed cotton. So that too... I'll be doing a load of laundry soon. And this... <laughs> It kind of has that chambray look to it. Hey, is that a, t a Tommy Hilfiger? Uh, 
boy. That's a Tommy Hilfiger little doohickey. So obviously the tags, this will be salvaged as well. But, you know, who can really resist a polka dot? This would be kind of really nice, I think, mixed in with, you know, uh, darker denim or some kind of a look like that. <laughs> I, I had to laugh out loud when I saw this in the store because this is so, like, 70s. I didn't have this particular set, but, you know, it's that, those big, those big roses. And here's a little bit of trim along here. And of course, this is even more, uh, you know, the pattern is, is a lot more dense here. So that was cute. This one, uh, white. Oh, and it has, it actually has a trim on both sides. So that's kind of a nice change. So what I'll probably do with this one is, you know, and sometimes these things um, are cut, they were not cut and sewn on, like, straight. So I, just to make sure things don't go horribly wrong, I would probably cut into the fabric at a seam, you know, two or three inches above here. So maybe I'd make my mark there, my snip there, so that if it tears crooked, I will at least still have a workable edge, um, you know, to use. Okay. Uh, I think this, well, this is almost the end of the fabric. Love these sorts of things. This is just, I guess, a napkin. Tone on tone, ornate pattern. That's my shtick. This is a curtain panel, and at one point, I wonder what the heck I did with it. It might be in a drawer downstairs. I had shears exactly like this, but of course full length. Um, so I love this sort of thing, and I love the color. So, you know, obviously the, it, the fabric is not great, but it, I mean, it's great if you want that sheer overlay type look. That could make a really nice, some really nice fabric clips. Now, I'm not sure why this, I think there are three or four pieces here. I'm not sure why it is this width. If it was sold on bolts like that or, or why. But anyway, all these pieces are loose. But, you know, sometimes when nothing else will do, you need navy. This thing is ready to collapse here. And I, not that yellow is my favorite color, but this was a bit of chenille. I don't have any chenille. So I can see this being used selectively in, um, you know, snippets or something like that. This is just another napkin. I like this sort of look. This would probably make a cute base for slow stitching. Um, okay. Well, I'll, I'll just keep going here. This was a little bundle of fabric, and I just took it because um, those are the very kinds of things that we use and need. But I'll show you this first. This cost $2.50. Somehow it didn't qualify for the bag sale. But I thought that there are enough dangly pieces here to sort of justify the price. So I will be removing each of these things, um, obviously, to, to reuse them as, um, you know, on safety pins or bulb pins as dangly items. Okay, so let's look at this fabric. I kind of just organized it last night when I opened, when I brought this stuff home. So we have one, two, three, four, five different, you know, I'd say navy or dark blue ones. So lovely, lovely, lovely. 
then yellow or gold. I hope you can still see this. What can you see? <laughs> crows. Did you ever need some crows? And then those are paw prints. Now of these, that's probably my favorite, but they all can definitely work in if they're combined with the right thing. So I'll just move this aside. And then this is more my color thing. Love, and look at this. Is this not gorgeous? I can't tell you how happy that makes me. I don't know. Can you see that there's a, a flower design and it's almost like, oh, you know what it is? It's like quilt uh, uh, designs. Like almost like a sampler of quilt designs. This is really cool too. Um, after doing that slow stitch pouch in the Summer Swap 2023 thing, I am now hooked, well, rehooked on slow stitching. So I am sort of prepping some projects that I will use, you know, if I'm the passenger in a car or something like that, or maybe even sit out on the patio under the gazebo and soak up some some of this summer weather um anyway i don't i know i didn't do a video i just did an instagram post on some slow stitching that i managed to do while i was a passenger in a car it was kind of a short i mean it wasn't a huge trip maybe half well maybe a little more than half an hour each way but i did a bunch of slow stitching so maybe seek out that post and, and actually follow me on Instagram so that you can see those sorts of things. So it's very portable, very, very doable. I just pre-selected some square, or they were actually circles, quilt pieces that I had thrifted. Um, a selection of embroidery thread, a couple of needles, had some scissors. Now they weren't the best scissors in the world, but I managed to chew through the thread and uh, yeah, I think I got nine or some, you know, some slow stitching done on nine of them. It was nothing, uh, you know, spectacular. It was just running stitch or seed stitch. But hey, it already elevated them to a more handmade look. Okay, so then I grab... Okay, the rest of this is all clothing. Now, I typically never uh, waste my time looking at clothing. Uh, but I have found, <coughs> excuse me, that there are some goodies to be had. Now, and again, this isn't mocking anybody's taste, but honestly, have you ever seen anything like this? This is the body of the sweater. So what is this? Like eight inches? Big collar. Big buttons. I didn't even notice the buttons, but those are cool. Oh, three of them. Um, and none of them are the same. Bonus. But anyway, look at this. So naturally, I'm going to pick, you know, using my stitch rip, ripper, seam binder, or uh, seam stitch ripper to get this off here. Now, this is a little copper plate that says free people. So naturally, I'll salvage that as well. But then... Okay, so you see this tiny little body, and I realize a lot of girls wear, you know, short, short things, but look at these monster sleeves. Look at the length of a sleeve. This is the shoulder seam. This is the, but anyway, this was the attraction here. Those little, that little rosebud trim, yellow rosebuds, and then of course, all of this. So, you, you know what I'm doing with this. So, let me throw it over there. Now, this, I have a weakness for scarves. 
and for much of my life I've worn scarves you know summer winter uh, as a as an accessory as a, a thing to keep your neck warm in, in winter or fall but is this not gorgeous now you can I hopefully you can see my hand through there so these parts are sheer I can't remember what this sort of stuff is called but it's like um, I have a book somewhere that explains how to do it and it's basically like and I don't know if this is the real thing or if it's like a factory process oh this came from Pennington's apparently so it's viscose and nylon um, anyway so in that book you start out with a piece of velvet and then you sort of somehow burn off the velvet and you're left with this sort of raised part and this sheer part but this is so nice so very nice and I hope it's washable hang to dry good <laughs> I don't have any granddaughters but when I saw this and maybe it's a good thing I don't have any granddaughters because then I don't have I don't have to give them this dress Again, I, I must have boho on the brain, but look at this. Pink, sequined, got a little bodice, a little cap sleeve. Joella, 100% polyester, size three. Cute little buttons. So, and a, even almost like a little crinoline-y thing here, a lining. So naturally, I will be deconstructing this because is that not the absolute best for some of the boho projects okay this I don't know this is this is a dress um oh somebody cut the tie down so I don't know it almost kind of reminds you of the old-fashioned house dresses it feels and it's got buttons from you know neck to hem which are kind of cool let me see is there a care tag maybe it's that old that it didn't even have care tags because normally that would be sewn into the into the side seam here but there's nothing there anyway feels like cotton or poly cotton oops and look at the colors now this has a, a dart like a not a dart what is that called anyway maybe if I can hold it this way you can see so this is a pattern piece here and then this center is another pattern piece here so when you take it apart um, obviously you end up with that and with that. Now on the back, what is the back like? So I'm just, the reason I'm saying this is because if you wanted, I guess, to maintain a bigger piece, then you would not open it up at the seams because, yeah. So this is the widest part of the back. I mean, maybe it gets a little wider towards the bottom of the skirt, but. So if a person wanted to use this for a book cover, you would obviously not, you'd either use it this way or leave these seams intact and then just cut however much you need to on either side. Anyway, but I'm sure that if you had something like this, you could figure that out on your own. This is just like a top of some Hager. So it's just a knit of some sort, but I like the pattern. And again, sometimes a person just wants you know, something kind of uh, soft and drapey. Oh, and this you can almost see through also in places. Soft and drapey in the right colors to just finish off a, a cluster. Now this, I'll show you this one. Can you see what's happening here? Could that possibly be more paisley in another colorway? So these are very pastel -y colors. You know, not necessarily my favorite color combo, but it's paisley and it's got soft colors that a person could definitely use in any application. 
Okay, this is the final thing. I'm not sure. Asha, 100% rayon made in India. Okay, so this. Oh, it does not. Yes, it does have buttons. So it has buttons. It has these little tuck pleats down the front. The reason I picked it up was this part of the, number one, the, the you know, the white could obviously be used as well. But these vibrant, vibrant florals. Uh, okay, if I remove that stitching, it should just open up. You know, not like a dart, which sometimes uh, you end up with, you kind of just make a hole in the in the item. So it's got this glittery thread that has been kind of just sewn down randomly as a as a highlight, I guess. A little bit of a border, but again, really bright colors, and of course the same thing on the other side. So, and that let me just have a quick look around. That is everything, guys. So was that not a score? Um, yeah. So thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoy watching some of the, um, I don't know, the drama, the, <laughs> the excitement of, of these sorts of reveals, then by all means, please subscribe. We are um, still trying to hit that 500 subscriber first kind of hurdle. Um, there will be a giveaway. And it just, um, yeah, it helps me. It helps my channel. And it ensures that I keep on doing this so that you can keep on watching and keep on, you know, either laughing with me <laughs> or at me or uh you know learning or what what for whatever reason you watch youtube videos anyway thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next time thanks bye